Hello everyone! For some time now, I've noticed comments on my videos and on other social platforms like Twitch chats that ask what sort of character roles are in the game. Well, this is a very expansive topic that I wanted help to tackle, which is why I've enlisted the wonderful Felco Punch to help me. Hi! Happy to be here and talk about this because diving into the game can be very overwhelming. When you see the roster and all the role categories, then you get into the topic of builds and playstyle, and it can quickly become a mess. So Wolfie and I are going to do our best to break it down in a much easier way for you. Ultimately, we've decided that the four hero roles that the game presents are fine enough, but we can go even further by dividing the roles even more and showing you some examples as we talk about them. The four roles in game are Frontline, Assassin, Range Damage, and Support. In my video, we'll be going over the frontline and range damage heroes, and Felco will have a part two on her channel going over the other two roles. So be sure to check that out once you're done here, and there will be a link in the description below. All right, so what do we define as frontline? A frontline hero is someone who can create space for the team, hold defensive zones, and pressure the enemy, uh, potentially setting up kills with crowd control. This type of character wants to stay in fights for as long as possible, being a disruptive force that makes the enemy reconsider how they're approaching fights. We can break down this role into two sub-roles. We have tanks, who are heroes that can absorb blows with higher than average defenses and can keep the enemy pinned down. And we have fighters, who are heroes that can keep fighting in extended battles and are really good at scattering enemy lines with their damage output. In tanks, we will place Margrave, Rutger, and we will also put Paco here. All three of these characters have a great amount of CC that they can use to both engage and protect allies. They also have plenty of defensive upgrades and larger than average health pools. Tank Paco does require a specific and dedicated build path, but it can work in the right conditions. For the fighters, we're going to put in Nasus, Sandora, Ramsey, Wu, Aisling, and we'll also include Ezrin. While these characters don't quite have the same health or defensive options as tanks, they make up for it by having great damage output if left unchecked and in some cases uh, have pretty decent CC and offensive utility. It's important to know that fighters typically don't do well as a solo melee, especially in uncoordinated play, so you want to try to pair them with another frontline or give them a lot of support if at all possible. The outlier here is Ezrin, who also requires a very specific build that is less optimal, but it does allow him to survive for a very long time and can easily force the enemy to spend a lot of resources. It's also very spooky. Another thing to mention is that our three tank choices can build to act more as aggressive fighters with high damage potential, but these are more advanced builds that we do not recommend if you're newer to the game. A common mistake that new frontline players do is not knowing when or how to leave fights. It's very easy to tunnel vision and find those great engages and land a lot of attacks, but you need to have the help of your team to actually bring enemies down, or they can just easily run away or worse, kill you after you've done a lot of your combo. A good rule of thumb is that when you reach about half health, you should consider looking for your escape route. And this is very good for every hero, but especially for melee, since they usually have a lot more ground to cover before they reach safety. Your job as a frontliner is also not to confirm kills, as enticing as that low health trip or charnock looks. It's more important to make sure that you're helping out your team and by keeping control of the space that you're fighting for. Let's move on to our ranged damage. Well, as the name might suggest, ranged damage heroes are those that attack from ranged and do tons of damage to a single enemy or group of enemies at once. These characters want to stay at a medium to medium long distance as often as possible, utilizing high ground and cover as an advantage while shooting the enemy team. So our ranged damage dealers also have two severals. We have shooters who are heroes that constantly apply steady damage to enemies from a distance, most often with their LMB attack. And then we have Caster, who are heroes that have high impact abilities that provide lots of damage, control, or utility. Or sometimes all three. In shooters, we will place Beckett, Amani, HK, Voden, Tmat, and Roland. All of these heroes will do a lot of damage primarily with their basic attacks and have insane single target damage. Many of them can also do a good amount of area of effect damage, depending on how you build them. 
If they position properly and hit all the shots, these characters will almost always be highest on the damage charts at the end of the game. Wow, look at the damage! <laughs> yes, and now for the casters. In this sub role, we will put Charnock, Mozu, Oru, Ezrin, and as a bonus, we'll put in Zenobia. All these characters have decent damage output with their LMB like the shooters do, but their real value comes from the extra damage and or utility of their other abilities. The high impact of abilities on Q and E can really shift a fight in your team's favor, and the mastery of these heroes is figuring out when and how to use these abilities to their maximum effectiveness. A full damage Zenobia is another case of a dedicated build that is somewhat difficult to pull off properly, but can be surprisingly effective in the right hands. When it comes to range damage, one of the most important things to practice is proper spacing. While being super far away is safer, damage fall off in this game is very significant and you're losing a lot of impact the further away you are. Plus, there's a high chance that your other abilities can't be cast from that distance. On the flip side, uh, being too close to the fights puts you in a lot of danger and will most likely force you to use your escape early just to survive. Being low health and still trying to contribute also makes you susceptible to assassins and the last thing you want to do is die. Lastly, it may seem obvious, but you also really want to practice your aim. When you can't actually land your attacks when they matter, you're not contributing anything and your team is not able to get much done and they might flame you. While these roles are what we recommend for these characters, don't let them define how you have to play. A big part of why this game is so enjoyable is because of the flexibility of builds. So if you find something that you enjoy and works for you, then you should probably play it. The most important thing is to remember to work together with your team, regardless of the character you're playing. If you're wanting to learn more about the other roles, we've got some good news for you. Part 2 of this video will be over on my channel where we will talk about the assassins and supports of this game. Be sure to check that out if you enjoyed watching this one. Also, subscribe to Wolfie because he makes amazing stuff like this and more videos like this all the time. So do it. Seriously, do it. We will see you all over there. Thank you for watching and have a great day.